Ja. Ja. This is crazy. Actually, I want to get some pictures of him just like that first. And then I'm going to catch him for you. What's going on, Avenger Gang? My name is Denzel Pratt, and you're watching another episode of Mandor Explorer. So today, I have a little mission that I want to try out for the first time ever. As you can see right now, I have my fishing rod. I got a little reel, one reel, one, one rod, and I got my snake hook. So what that only means is, I'm gonna be looking for snakes while I'm fishing. So if I see any while I'm fishing, I'm gonna go try and catch them real quick. and show you guys that as well. And then I'm gonna be fishing this little pond and a few other ponds around the area. I know I caught a small largemouth bass in here before. I think I've seen some bluegill and a little fish in here. So wish me luck, man. Hopefully it's gonna be a good video for you guys. And hopefully I come across some cool stuff for you. All right, first cast. I had one little bluegill just chase it just now right there, but he didn't commit to it. It's a lot of little um, green algae growing in here, so I'm gonna expect a lot of that to be coming on my line too. Got him. Second cast out here. Ah, oh, he got off, y'all. That was a little bluegill. Dang it. All right, guys, we're on right now. Looks to be a bluegill. Nice little bluegill. Probably been living in this little pond for a while. Man, that's the biggest bluegill I ever caught. <laughs> Yo, this thing is massive. This is bigger than the ones in the creek. You kidding me? Look at this fish. That's a big bluegill. Another way that you can tell that it's a bluegill, if you raise their pectoral fin up and reach to the top of its head, like right here, then that, that could tell you that it's a bluegill. Green sunfish don't have that long, um, long flap. It's a decent fish, y'all. All right, I'm gonna go down here and release him. See you later, buddy. <laughs> this is why you never leave your boots behind, y'all. Never leave your boots behind. Yo, I got the I got the stream monster on. I don't know what this is. I think it's a largemouth bass. I caught a largemouth bass in here before, but this is a monster. Oh my god. I hope I can land it. Don't get off of it. What? <laughs> what bro this is like a two pound boy i'm gonna i'm gonna take him over there so i can measure him real quick yo in a in a little pond look at this i got the pond master <laughs> oh my god what i did was i took a little worm that i found and i put it at the end of my bait and that seemed to work I threw it right in that little short grass over there and got this guy to attack it, so. That's crazy. I'm gonna measure him out real quick. I'm trying to get back in the water fast. He's got the creek master, man. Well, not the creek, but the pond master. Look at that. Chunky little boy. I'm mad I left my bag all the way over here. Let me get a quick measurement of this guy. All right, guys. So the official weight is 1.5 pounds, but uh, get a measurement real quick on this guy. 14 inches. It's nice. Somebody released this big boy back in to his pond. I mean, never. Buddy. Let's see if I can entice another bite from this little pond. Maybe I need to get another um, worm to put on my 
on my line. <laughs> that seemed to work instantly. As soon as I put that worm on, the second cast, I got a, I got a bite from the, probably the biggest fish in this pond, so. So I'm about to switch to something with a little bit more action. I kind of like spinner baits a lot more than the spoons, so. I rigged this guy up using a, a Texas rig. Let's see if that works. All right, guys, so there haven't been much action after those last couple of fish. I'm about to head to my next location and see what I can turn up there. Yo, y'all wouldn't believe this. <laughs> oh my gosh, yo. I saw him come up for it the first time and I was like, what the heck? But yeah, like we had a storm surge the other day. So, I mean, he got down here from out the lake. I'm going to put him back into the lake, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put him in the lake real quick. This fish is super sensitive, man. There you go. Now, you know what to do? It's like super murky, so they can't really see it. So like you gotta go in like shallow water. I went down to the little uh, pond on the side there. Yeah. I caught a largemouth bass and a little bluegill. Okay. But what I recommend is like, it had a little storm surge the other day. So a lot of the fish got down into the smaller streams. It's gonna be a lot easier for them to see the bait. So I got a little spin on right now. All right guys, first victim looked like a little fall fish. Actually no, that's a bluehead chub. Little blue head chub. Okay. So I'm walking through the woods trying to get to the next pond to fish. Um, I'm using Google Maps and we got our first live. Actually, no, it's my second live box turtle. Um, I found one uh, probably a week ago. Me and Trey found one a week ago, but I came across this one right here. This looks like a male. He got those red eyes. And he got this um, concave plastron. So that's how you would tell. Let me get him in the light so you can see him a little bit better. I'm about to get a picture of this guy. And the reason why they call box turtle is because they got a hinged plastron, which closes fully whenever they feel threatened or a predator attacks them. So there's no way that um, animals can get to them when they um, fold up completely in their box shell. All right, guys, so this box turtle is being super shy. He's been coming out. Um, I'm going to keep going in my direction. I'm going to leave him right here. At long last, my third location. I see if anything's in here. I don't think any fish is in here. My opinion is that it gets filled when um, the rain is really heavy, and that's the only reason why water is in this right now. I don't see any fish inside here, not even bait fish. So I'm not even going to try fishing. I'm just going to go to my last location and see if I can catch something there. Yo. Yeah. Yo, this is crazy. I actually want to get some pictures of him just like that first. And then I'm going to catch him for you. I was even like contemplating coming through this because it looks so thick. I was like, I don't want to come through this. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get through it and get to my last location. But look at that little rough green snake, man. I'm going to get him real quick. I'm going to get some pictures and then I'm going to pick him up. All right, guys. So I got all the pictures I wanted of this little rough green snake. I'm about to catch him. That was easier than I thought. <laughs> Yo, this is so cool, man. Look at this little guy. Let me give you guys a good look at him. That's so dope. All right, so it's two species of green snakes here in Virginia. It's a rough green snake and a smooth green snake. The only difference is that the rough green snake is a little bit more slender and it has um, keeled scales so that it has more rough appearance than the smooth green snakes. And the smooth green snakes um, look a little bit thicker. So that's the two ways that you can actually tell. These guys would like sit in trees, hanging from branches and just sway with the wind like a branch would. So you, you would walk by a green tree and wouldn't even notice that the rough green snake was there. So that's a cool feature of these guys. It's a pretty calm snake. He's in like freaking out and pooping all over me or anything, so. Actually, never mind. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Look at that. 
Oh my gosh, that's so dope. This is my first ever rough green snake, by the way, so it's a really special find for me. This is so dope. Alright, I'm gonna get some more photos with him on the ground. Then I'm gonna release him back into his habitat. Orange tongue, y'all. If he had put it back, you see that? Look at the color underneath him too, it's like super pretty. Fine specimen, man. Alright, I'm gonna try to get him settled down for pictures and then let him go. Alright guys, so I got all the pictures I wanted of this little rough green snake. I'm about to release him back onto his branch that I found him on. Look at this guy's demeanor, man. His demeanor is so like chill and calm, collected. Like he's not afraid of anything. Look at that. You could just pick him up off the tree and he won't even like just freak out. Alright, I'm gonna release him back onto the tree that I found him on. And then I'm gonna be gone. See you later, buddy. This little guy, you know. All right, buddy. Catch you later. Live long. Hey, your cousins, I'm here. So my first question today is, what's the difference between rough green snakes and smooth green snakes? On this power line strip, is a really good area to find box turtles. They like grassy areas where they could like build their little homes and sit in so maybe I might find a couple of box turtles. Literally 10 minutes later after I said that, a box turtle shell. The remains. Like, this is a trend right now. You always find the remains of box turtles. I just flip this beautiful male eastern fence lizard underneath this little thing right here. Beautiful, stunning looking one man. See that rough keel um, appearance on those scales. And you could also see that blue underneath the neck right there. With a wavy pattern on the back. Classic. All right. Put his home back how I made it. At least it's got right back under there. Guys, look at this bunny thing and he, he hiding. <laughs> that thing fast. <laughs> Yo, I honestly think I found somebody's home just now. That's crazy. I feel so bad for him right now. I wish I could help him out. Hello? All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with this place if that's somebody's home now. I'm gonna keep looking up elsewhere. Yeah, and before all my friends and family um, get worried about me being around random places, I'm still on my school's campus, so that's why I feel a little bit more safe than I would if I was like just rambling through a bush, not knowing where I'm going, so. You guys can relax, I'm, I'm safe. I know where I'm headed. Oh, and I'm pulling up on my next location right now. I don't know if you guys can see it over here. All right guys, so change of plan. I rest my fishing bag down and I forgot to pick it back up, so I gotta go look for that. I don't know where I rested, so I'm sprinting back through the woods trying to find it before. Sunset. Man, that's a little journey to get back there. Right where I saw that turtle shell, I left my bag. Alright. I know y'all probably think this hiking stuff is a joke, bro. If you ain't fit, you might die right here. I wasn't even paying attention, y'all, and right, literally right here is where I hooked this little. Uh, looks like a small mouth bass. Actually, no. Let me check them out. It's a little large mouth bass. That's crazy. I wasn't even paying attention anymore. Literally, the bait is right here on the shore. And this little small, little large mouth bass took it. All right. Let him go. Bye, buddy. All right, adventure gang. So I really thought this pond would stunk me, but I caught one little small largemouth bass in here. I'm gonna fish for a little bit more. Hopefully I catch something. If I don't, thank you guys for watching, man. I really appreciate all you guys' support. Like, share, and subscribe.
Got another one, guys. He slammed it right at the shore again. <clears throat> the largemouth bass. This guy is hooked pretty good. Alright. Time for release. Bye, buddy. <laughs> so the video isn't done yet, y'all. I'm gonna fish for a couple more and then see what happens. I'll let you know. Yeah, guys. We're on again. Not a large amount. <laughs> this is so much fun. And I was about to leave too. Hey, he just skidded. Last buddy. <laughs> That's so cool. It's a decent sized large amount. Not my biggest, but you know. Alright, I'm gonna let him go real quick. Hi, buddy. He's gone.